The main focus of this talk, as I've already said, is, to, is about how to implement redundancies fairly. But it's important to appreciate that you're doing that within a framework of the workers' contractual rights. And most cases, in fact all cases, the starting point will be each worker's, each employee's contract of employment. Now, typically they'll have a number of rights that are underpinned by statutory legislation as well, so the most obvious example will be the right to receive notice of dismissal. There's a minimum period of notice that employees are entitled to, which is one week for each year of service, up to a maximum of 12 weeks. So when you're planning redundancy, you need to be aware of what each employee's right to notice is, their notice entitlement, and you may find that if you are trying to do things in a hurry, you won't have time to give employees their full notice and therefore you'll have to make what they call a payment in lieu of notice, in other words a payment to compensate them for what they would have earned during the untaken period of their notice. Another thing to watch out for is holiday rights. Again, there's a statutory minimum holiday entitlement which works out at five weeks and three days for full-time employees most employees will have equivalent or perhaps better rights under their contract of employment. Uh, again, if you're in a hurry, you're, you're, you're going to find that, that employees will have accrued holiday entitlement which they won't be able to take before the redundancy programme finishes and therefore you're going to have to make an extra payment to compensate them for untaken holiday. So before you start anything, you will need to check employees contract of employment. Another thing to watch out for is whether workers will have inherited terms and conditions from a previous employer so it may well be that they are different groups of workers with different rights and you'll need to be aware of that. But of course the most important right employees have when they're potentially faced with redundancy is the right to a statutory redundancy payment. Now most people are familiar with how that's worked out and there's lots of tools on the internet to help you calculate that, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but broadly speaking, each employee is entitled to a week's pay for each continuous year of service. If you're 41 or over, you get one and a half weeks pay for each year of service. There's a maximum of 20 years service that's credited in the calculation, and there's also a cap on the week's pay which goes up in April every year. Currently it's £464. The calculation of a week's pay is quite complicated, but broadly it relates to basic pay, not to your average earnings. And in many cases it will be academic. Many people will be earning more than £464 a week gross. Now, it may well be that the contract of employment enhances the statutory redundancy payment and makes it more generous, and that's obviously something that you will need to check. It's also worth bearing in mind that if employees are over 50 and they're in an occupational pension scheme, which is rare but not unheard of in, 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 in the not-for-profit sector, you will need to be aware that, that a redundancy of those staff will trigger an early retirement pension and a significant lump sum which is much higher than the statutory redundancy payment. You may end up footing the bill for that. So it's important in overall to do your sums properly before you start embarking on a redundancy exercise.